can't hear me. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. Hi. Wow. This is awesome. What a turnout. Thank you so much for being here. My name is Maria Santamaro with the Scranton Cultural Center. Hi. <laughs> this is going to be such a fun night. We have our, our very special guests, uh, the Colonnade and Posh are here. Uh, both chefs are here. Uh, Jordan Azevedo is here, and he's going to talk to us a lot about what, what's on our menu for tonight. Sean Keeney is here. Now, which, who's at Colonnade and who's at Which Posh? one's which, yeah. Which one's which? Well, we know. <laughs> <laughs> and you thought we were going to ask you which came first, the chicken That's or the right. egg? That's <laughs> right. <laughs> 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 I'm from the Colonnade, and okay. Jordan's from Posh. Oh, cool. Very cool. We debate which one's better, but Posh. <laughs> 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 and then they sing, anything you can do, I can do better. That's okay. right. Before we get started, I just want to give a very special shout out to our board of directors that I know some are here in the room tonight um, to watch this very special presentation. Um, also give a very special thanks to Joshua Mast and Paul Blackledge for making this all happen. Um, they really go all out all the time. Um, I, think, I think we all know that. I mean, we know how busy they are. and um, to stopped in their tracks coming down off of a busy holiday is, is really key and uh, we truly appreciate that. Thank you so much for being here guys. And they're actually like on the floor helping because that's what they do and that's how they roll. They get right, they get their hands dirty. I'll tell you, they're great neighbors. <laughs> um, also our executive director, Deb Peterson is here with um, Elaine Shepard and Michael Gilmartin and they're gonna join in on the conversation as well. I also wanna give a very special shout out to Mark Migliori from ECTV because this is all gonna be recorded and broadcast a little bit later this evening. I'm thinking in, in and around the 10 or 11 o'clock hour. Um, also to our sponsors, Toyota of Scranton is our season sponsor. Our major sponsors are, um, like I said, Toyota of Scranton. Give them a round of applause. <laughs> Fidelity Bank, our box office sponsor. LTV, LTV, LTV Rastro, <laughs> our bar sponsor. We couldn't do all that we do without our, all of our major sponsors. And our menu sponsor this year is McGrill, Merkel, and Quinn. So we're very thankful to have them on board as well. So I think we've got most of that covered. About the halfway point, we're going to do a quick drawing. So hopefully you've all filled out your raffle tickets because we are going to be giving away tickets to the upcoming menu in February, which will be Angelo's from Wheeler Avenue. Um, that's an Italian ristorante. Uh, that should be a fun one, too. Um, so make sure you fill out the raffle tickets for that. And uh, the other set of tickets are going to be to our upcoming Guitar Mageddon. We'll talk more about that later. So without further ado, chefs, let's go ahead and get started. I'm not going to talk about the food items. You are. <laughs> okay. All right. All right, we can share if you'd like. Um, so we got a, I want to say it's very interesting, perhaps different uh, courses for you that perhaps people don't really showcase to you, and that's why Posh and the Colony are so special. Um, the first course that we're going to do, and we're going to start doing a little things for you, is it's an Aleppo pepper battered cauliflower bite. Uh, it'll be served over a creamy goat cheese polenta with a uh, herb oil, and we're going to do something cool with molecular gastronomy. Hopefully I don't mess up these words. What? Exactly. <laughs> um, like you're showing, we're going to be making foams, we're sous vide we're doing all these cool things. I know, big words I can't pronounce, <laughs> nor can I spell. Uh, so we're going to start with that. And uh, so I'll start making some stuff, and uh, you know, we'll see where the night takes us. That sounded like a science lab. Right? <laughs> I didn't do too well in school, so it's all new to me. Um, that's, so that's why I became a cook. Uh, so right now, I'm just going to show you a little bit about uh, the tempura batter, how you make it, how you can make it at home, and then we're going to get into the foam. Uh, this is a tempura batter. It's a standard thing. It's so easy and so cool. A lot of people are a little bit intimidated when you say tempura. You know, it is Japanese. 
And uh, so what it is, is just the combination of flour and club soda. And you want, you know, cold club soda. Uh, it helps it aerate and stay very light. And a tempura batter is very light as opposed to a beer batter, which would be a little bit more thick. That's what we're using tonight. Uh, it's really easy. You can add anything you like to it to you know, showcase the flavors that you're trying to do. So we're doing it with cauliflower, but if you want to do it with green beans, perhaps, you know, with hollandaise, that's something nice. You do it with a mushroom. I'm pretty sure I did a burger once, you know, stuck that on a bun. That's uh, <laughs> Cause you know, I was going to ask you, Chef, is this one of those items that could be dressed down or dressed up? Like you could do ca like serve it with a casual dish yeah, or absolutely. a yeah. more this is actually one of the, dish? Yeah, this is one of the dishes. You're going to see kind of the difference. Um, you know, if, you, if some of you have uh, visited Posh, which one of you would visit Posh? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Now, which peop how many people went to the colonnade? I went. <laughs> All right. Here we go. <laughs> one for us. Uh, so it's equal parts, like I said, uh, just a little bit of flour and a little bit of club soda. And we just simply uh, stir it up, mix it up. And, the and at, at this point, you're just, it's, it's plain. So we're gonna add our Aleppo pepper to it. You know, and if you and want to add anything else to it, you could. And the reason that we're uh, kind of at, like adding club soda is you have the, the carbonation in there. So the bubbles actually help make it a lighter batter. And then, uh, you always want to add your, uh, when you're making a tempura, you always want to add your liquid to dry. And that helps, you know, gate, and you add a little bit of liquid at a time, it helps you gauge uh, like how thick or how thin you want the batter. And generally tempura is on the thinner side. So then what Jordan did is we added a little bit of the Aleppo pepper, which has a little bit of heat and will come through and that'll, uh, you know, help uh, season the cauliflower. Yeah. And so, you know, me and Sean sat down earlier in the week and we kind of wrote this menu out. And we had a specific uh, idea for it that we wanted to showcase and wanted to kind of explain to you. And you're going to see it course by course. And what it is is basically how to build a dish correctly. Because uh, I get a lot of questions if I visit tables out in the restaurant and they ask, they go, how did you learn or how did you figure out what to put with this? And there's, not that there's a wrong way, but there's things that are better than other things to do it with. And, um, and we're going to kind of explain that. You're going to see it in this dish and the next one and the next one after that. And what this one is, is we took crunchy and we took creamy. You know, if you had crunchy and crunchy together, it would be, you know, it'd be too much. You know, you just have one sensation. If you... You know, what do they say? Opposites attract? Right, mom? Mom's here. Oh, that's funny. I was going to give a round of applause to mom. She made me. All right. She made me. She made me. <laughs> it's an embarrassing moment for everybody. Um, but uh, yes. Yeah, so, my son would say. <laughs> so, yeah, so we did a little bit of texture. It, we're playing on textures, we're playing on heat. When you build a dish, you want to make sure that there's four things that you try to fit in there. You fit in heat, you fit in sweet, you fit savory, and you fit salty. If you get all four of those, you're mind blown every time. Your tongue will explode. And, uh, you know, that, I think some professor figured that out. But that's what we're doing here is with the, the creamy polenta with the crunchy uh, cauliflower and then the saffron foam that we're going to do for you. Sean's going to do it for you. Um, all this mixed together, you're going to notice that it plays really well. And uh, the dish is, you know, it's rounded. It's well-rounded. Uh, so those are kind of the, the things that we want to try to showcase to you. And now if at any point you have any questions, just yell it out because we're like family Oh, we'll tonight. get there, don't you? Yeah. Yo, we'll have questions. <laughs> just scream it out. We'll, so Sean's going to do a little bit of the foam. Is this a hard dish to make? No, this is super easy. So Super Bowl. Like, yeah, we, like, absolutely. This would be a fun Super Bowl dish. Yeah. Think, right? yeah like the, fir the first part of the dish, I would say, is fairly simple and you could definitely do it at home. Now, the foam is a little bit more difficult. It can be a little bit temperamental. And we're bringing in the molecular uh, gastronomy. Then you're scaring me now. <laughs> right. So uh, basically Basically what molecular gastronomy is, it's, it's like the thickening or stabilizing of food using like chemicals that you kind of will see on the back of your, uh, your boxes of food that you that might we can't buy. Pronounce? It, yes. So we have soy lecithin. Soy le lecithin is a stabilizer and it stabilizes and creates bubbles. So like uh, the idea behind it is we took a flavorful liquid, so a saf like lime and saffron, we bloomed the saffron and the lime juice, and then uh, added a little bit of salt, a little bit of sugar, and then what we're going to do is we're going to add the soy lecithin, and then we're going to uh, 
blend it with a stick blender and it'll create bubbles. Like if you whisk something, you see bubbles form. But then what this does, you incorporate air and the, the bubbles will then maintain their height and you can put a little bit of flavor on the plate and it's just a different aspect. Instead of making an aioli, which we could have done, or an actual sauce, it just creates another aspect of flavor and it's presented a little bit differently. So, uh, you know, because I saw this probably for the first time like 15 years ago and I hated it. I'm like, <laughs> foam? Who wants to put foam on a plate? It looks like cat throw up or something oh, like great. that on a plate. That's where my mind my went. <laughs> but you're eating it, not me. The, <laughs> but the as I kind of learned about it and figured out that you could work different flavors into your dish and present them in a different way, that it all kind of made sense. So we'll go ahead and we'll start this. So this is the uh, the liquid, the lime and saffron. How much uh, is saffron these days? It's, uh, it's not cheap. Don't ask Josh or Paul. <laughs> actually, actually, I can give a shout a out to, uh, to Paul's mom, Sally. Uh, she does little uh, spice runs for me down in oh. Lancaster and brings me oh, back little see. packets of saffron. So uh, awesome. I'm, what a, what a, I'm, I'm blessed that way. What a team. What a team. So this is the soy lecithin, if you can see the uh, camera. Uh, it's just a powder. All right, it has kind of a yellow hue to it. It doesn't really affect color at all. So um, uh, we're going to use about a like teaspoon cool. and a half. We were trying to figure it out today, the measurements, uh, and everything's done in grams. And I'm like, so I had a, I, I, I had a, I, I had a Siri, and I'm like, Do you, what is a gram to a tablespoon? What is this? Right. The That's British cook-off? Yeah. <laughs> and then they gave me more grams. And I was like, just guess it. Sean's like, eh, that looks good. Something also very interesting with this is that you can use it for your delicious drinks that you're drinking. That's what they use it a lot for. Uh, if you make a martini and you want it to do a nice uh, citrus foam on top of it, it complements really well. Uh, it's also, you know, obviously really good looking. And that's what we care about around here. Uh, but that's also a different thing <laughs> they use it better. for. So we're using it in a savory way, but you can use it as a sweet way, in a dessert, in a drink, wherever your mind can take you. So as you can see, just from a couple seconds of blending, you have the liquid at the bottom, and then the foam, and then the foam has now kind of risen to the top, and it's very stable. Like, we can pick this up with a spoon, and it'll stay. Oh, so, that's weird. Yeah, it's pretty interesting stuff. It's like stuff. meringue. So, we are magicians. Yeah, it, it's a meringue without it, you know, things mixed up. <laughs> having to go through that whole process. So, hey, Speaking of martinis, I forgot to mention this. Our great bar staff, um, our, our wonderful bartender, Brian, has um, a wonderful pomegranate martini that he whipped up. Did, did anybody try it? Mm -hmm. I saw it on the sign. It looked good. I like a nice pomegranate. Po nice pomegranate martini, especially this time it, of year. I'm, I'm wondering if we can whip some vodka up. Can we have some vodka? Just <laughs> whipped vodka? What kind? Right? Hey, I have Let's connections. Anything? <laughs> I don't know if we could do it. I'm not sure oh. if the laws of physics allows us to do it, but that'd be cool, oh, right? We'll put the play. Here, and I thought we were innovative in our house because I went down and I bought a pastry bag for our stuffed <laughs> calamari over Christmas. Wow. You have <laughs> I can't touch this. We have, I'm not going to spoil the, uh, you know, the stuff for you, but we are going to create magic. So you're getting a two-for-one deal today. Sean got some magic for that us, magic. and it's really cool. <laughs> this is step one of the night. All right, so uh, we're just going to wait for the first uh, round of stuff to yeah. come out, and we'll put the foam on. Uh, but as we're kind of waiting for that, actually, here it comes now. Oh, very so cool. We so we're going to start serving this. Yeah, yeah. We'll finish that garnish. That is so cool. Right here is fine. Oh, I have to get out of the way, he's telling me. <laughs> oh, I really have to get out of the way. Oh, and then wow. we, we also garnished uh, the, the plates that you'll be getting with a little bit of herb oil. Um, yeah, yeah, definitely. Which is just uh, some fresh herbs. And we just pureed it down with uh, some. Share uh, some foam. Sure. <laughs> 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 These two are funny. And you guys don't work in the same kitchen? No. no. I Skype them sometimes. <laughs> That's too funny. <laughs> From each other's kitchens? Yeah. That's I right. have the better kitchen. We Skype yeah, each does. other. We Skype. <laughs> I tell him I miss him. Josh is on his way up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he's not happy. <laughs> That's never. 
<laughs> That's too funny. All right. So I drive that way coming into go. work every morning, and I have to tell you, um, when I say I, I believe that Josh and Paul are the hardest working people, because like who will be cutting the grass? Often one of them. <laughs> or you know, shoveling snow. Often one of them. Oh, they're always doing stuff. Are they in the kitchen? Yep. Are they serving? Yep. Thank you. I had Josh, which was pretty cool. Maybe he won't mind I said this, but we uh, we needed an extra guy on the on the hotline for a busy night, and he went back there. He, I mean, he had a nice clothes. It was intimidating, but he came back there, and he the first night we I think we did 150 people, and the guy didn't miss a beat, and he had the cleanest station of everybody else. How about it? Well, then I'm gonna lose my job. Oh, he'll so. get it done. There's no <laughs> doubt about it. Maybe a little more. Yeah, when he says we'll make it happen, they make it happen. Do you think maybe we'll work the, like shooting it over the front? Okay. And and the reason we the amazing. reason we elected to do the foam out here was just because it it can be a little bit temperamental and. Uh, we just didn't want to have to transport it to the back in the middle of everything. I think that so. was really good thinking. I might want to take one of those plates and like bring it up to the camera so the camera gets a good bird's eye view. Sure, you got it. This one's good. We're ready, guys. Oh, there you go. Put that back. I'm hearing a wow. Yeah. I think a lot of the room has already started to try this. What are we thinking? Excellent. Show All right. Hands. And like the and with the polenta on there, it kind of helps quell the heat a little bit. You know, brings the heat of the pepper down. Um, so that you know, and that's where uh, Jordan started to kind of talk. Is you know, we try we're trying to make a balanced dish. Um, you know, every time, so it, you know, that we have all the right components on there. Now, what, what is that green? That's an herb oil. So that's like herb about, oil. You know, that's uh, my guy, Bobby Flay. He loves his oils, right? And I've, I've been watching him for, for you know, a long time, for years. And he makes oils for everything. And uh, and you can do it with a lot. But how we did it, and it's pretty, it's pretty interesting. Is you just take a bunch of herbs. Anything you want. I did, a, this is basil, and it's partially in its thyme. And you throw a whole bunch There's of it. There's a song. Uh, let's do it. <laughs> throw it on the beat, DJ. Um, you throw a you know, we did parsley, uh, basil, thyme in a blender. You fill it up about three quarters away. You drizzle a little bit of oil into it. Sorry. As soon as it uh, starts blending, you just blend it for like three minutes straight. And then you add that mixture to a cheesecloth. And, uh, and you just let it sit over you know, a bucket and let the oil drip out. And that's, you know, that's what you got in front of you. But well, that's a trick of Bobby Flay. I ripped it off of him. I met Bobby Flay once and... Uh, I served him once. He was mean. <laughs> he was so mean. Every chef I've ever met was really nice. He was, uh, I think he was cranky. It's a late night. It's on. Joy, can you hear me? I don't think I'm cranky, but people... We're going to come this Maria, way. Maria, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Elaine. Yeah. Hello. Pocky. How are you? Hi. I want to know what... This is very spicy. I want to know what Aleppo pepper is. Thank you. Aleppo pepper is a Middle Eastern pepper. Um, just like every, any other kind of pepper. You have a... What is it? Kanye pepper? No, it's... Okay. I always oh, say Kanye. So Come on. I know right. chili pepper. Um, <laughs> Kanye pepper. Jordan, what is making this red? Is that the... the that's, that's the Aleppo pepper, yeah. It's a red chili pepper, and it gets roasted down, and then it gets pureed into a paste that then can be put into the, the batter, like you kind of see it. Is it's it still really hot? Yeah, uh, it's, it's got hot. a little bit of heat to it. Like, it, it it's delicious. Depends on how sensitive uh, people's heat yeah. So it's not Thing as bad is. as a ghost pepper. No, 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 no. <laughs> Anybody ever have ghost pepper? I think I've had Aleppo and um, did, cheese. Yes. Jordan, did you roast the Aleppo pepper, or is that a product that's available? You can get it either way. You know, it um, just depends on where you want to go with it. But uh, it's, it's roasted. Yeah, it comes in the, the raw. I mean, yeah, the, the raw peppers. And you roast them, 
Uh, you take the skin off of them, kind of like a roasted red pepper that you would do sweet. Nice. Take the skin off it, the seeds out of it, because it tends to be hot. And then at that point, it's soft, and you can just whip it right up. Now, did its parents make it, like your parents made you? Made me. <laughs> <laughs> As I tell my son, I didn't, I didn't make you. You just happened. <laughs> That's right. Well, I was embarrassed my whole life, so any chance I get, I'm going to take it. No. <laughs> okay. Your mom is beautiful. I, she is. That's where I get all my good looks from. I do not, but Mark. Yeah. Don't forget, Mark and Craig. I think this is the last one. Yep. Our TV guy is going to want a shot at this, I'm sure. There we go. And I, I'm, my mouth, thank you. Oh no. All right. All right. So it's not real hot? How, how are we with the heat? Oh. So I, I think. I've never I, had I, anything like this. I think everybody got it. Do you guys like it? You only, I only heard a little bit. All right. I'm gauging on how much booze is flowing by the, by the claps. So I'm assuming by the third course we're going to be yelling. <laughs> There's a wonderful, I think we mentioned this last time, there's a wonderful event here. It's my favorite one we do. It's uh, the Fine Food and Wine. Yes. We were going to talk about that. I love it. Oh it's the goodness. best one. Has everybody gone to that one yet? All right. Elaine's cheering at this year. Oh, yeah? All right. We, uh, Posh loves the event. Colony loves the event. And mm -hmm. uh, I always make a joke because... There's about five groups, if anybody's familiar with it, they go to room to room trying all these different uh, foods that the chef prepare and drinks that the restaurant uh, provides. And by the fifth group that comes in, I don't even talk. They're dancing, they're in the corners, they're mingling. You can't even get a word in. That is like the talk of all the chefs in our area. That is what area. happens. Like they, la they, they get a kick yeah. out of that. Yeah, I make true. Josh yell at them. It's a good time. So, Evening of Fine Food and Wine is this April. It's always the last Sunday of April, so it's April 29th. And if, you, um, if you've never been to one, please, by all means, it's our biggest fundraising event of the year. I think Deb will want to talk a little bit more about that a little bit later. Um, but it's, it's, it's a load of fun, and, and you get to try all of these different wonderful dishes. In the meantime, can we talk a little bit about the rose, the polenta? I'm, I'm not a goat yeah. cheese girl, and I'm, I love all kinds of food, but I don't love goat cheese. Okay. But this is delicious, so can you talk a little bit of how you made that, or did I miss that? Did you no, no, we didn't, even, we didn't okay. even touch upon it. It's a great question. Um, the polenta mm. is, is pretty easy. Uh, you can make it a couple different ways. It's very, um, I don't know the words. I didn't go to school. Um, <laughs> You can do it. Uh, you really? can make it fried. You can, do it. you can you can do it. Uh, you can make it fried. You can make it creamy like we did. Uh, you can make it into sticks. Uh, all these different applications for it. And what we do is we made it creamy. So like the recipe, I'll give you the recipe. I'll share it. Um, is I did five parts water or stock to one part polenta, and you can buy it at any store, mm. aka cornmeal. And uh, you just bring your stock, when I use chicken stock, uh, to, you know, to a boil, and then you add the polenta, and it, you know, it takes it from there. It becomes cream, it becomes nice, and at that point you can add anything you want to it. So we add a little bit of goat cheese, um, I add a little bit of herbs to it, you know, salt, pepper, but at its natural form, you know, that, that is what it is. And if you want to make it a little bit more stiff, like sometimes we do in the, you know, the restaurant, is we cut back on the amount of stock or water. So where we did five, I would do three. And it would be very firm. And at that point when it was firm, I'd spread it out onto a sheet pan. It would cool down and I can cut it into french fries. And then you can, you know, coat them with flour and, and fry them and you can have polenta fries. So you can do anything you want with it. It's very cool. That, I, I am Thank like you. amazed. Isn't this delicious? Now, is this on the menu now? We have, an, I think I was going to say, and I lost track, is um, this is, like I think you were saying that it, you can make it simple or more complex. This is on our menu, if I know the people who went to Posh. Um, it's our fried you know, cauliflower bite, and we serve it with a buttermilk ranch dressing, and that's it. So it's very simple in that sense, but we, you know, we, anybody can do it. You took that idea and expanded off of it. But instead of just giving you some cauliflower on a plate, we're like, we want to make it a show. Mm -hmm. So we spoke about it, and that's the, you know, what we came up with. But that's so cool. it is on the menu at Posh, so if you like if it, any come over and get it. Went over to Posh and said, hey, I'm really in the mood for that thing that you made. Would you do it? Of course. On the spot? On the spot. Awesome. How about it? Let's yeah. go. Right now. On the spot. <laughs>
We do a lot of on-the-spot stuff, but that's what we like to pride ourselves on. Speaking of on-the-spot, don't you do like a pop-up event? Or has... Yes. The pop-up is... Oh, is that... That's him, yeah. Whoa. <laughs> it's the colony. I'm the pop-up. Uh, yeah, the first, first Monday of every month, uh, we do... Um, uh, a pop-up event where we do uh, usually five to six courses uh, and the, the, each menu is different, a uh, different theme. Uh, I think our last one in December is we did an all-out Christmas theme. So we took different uh, ideas, you know, from Christmas carols or just Christmas itself and things to give us inspiration. And I usually team up with a guest chef um, and oh, that's uh, so cool. and we and you know we basically will come up with a menu in like an hour hour and a half and we get it set and then we usually post that on our Facebook account about two weeks uh, prior to so in February we have our first pop up of the year coming up and uh, can you tell us who it is uh, the theme is going to be uh, actually it's a very good friend of mine uh, his name is uh, Rick Rabiak he works uh, in Tunkhannock at a small restaurant called Remington's but oh, he and cool. I have been friends for 20 years and uh, he's very much a mentor of mine so we came up with the idea of doing our personal history very with cool. each other so dishes that we've worked together on dishes that uh, he's experienced and done uh, so like for instance um, uh, I think one of our first courses uh, he spent a lot of time in New Jersey so we're going to do a Taylor ham uh, or a pork roll uh, deviled egg so taking the idea of doing a uh, breakfast sandwich that uh, is typically on a Kaiser roll uh, in Jersey, uh, egg, the Taylor ham or pork roll, and um, and and then just turning that into oh, a wow, double day. Awesome. So yeah, so we like to have fun with it. Uh, and what Jordan's doing right now is this is the, our next course. So, th so this is a if nobody's familiar with this, this is a sous vide machine. It's a uh, or called an immersion circulator. Everybody has one, right? Yeah. 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 Actually, you can find these at Target. Yeah. Target has started to sell them, really? so um, it, it's becoming more popular. So uh, well, why would we do that? <laughs> we could just so the, uh, well, more popular to <laughs> foodies and uh, mm. cooks such as myself. So uh, what we're dealing with here is you're cooking in a warm water bath. Uh, this has a temperature that you set on it. And so if anybody knows anything about uh, temperatures on steaks, you have rare, medium rare, so on and so forth. Well, all those have a particular temperature. So like rare, medium rare is in the ballpark of like 125 to 130. So we have this set about 132, 132 degrees. So uh, we're shooting for a nice medium rare uh, steak. So uh, tonight we're using flank steak. I'll, I'll kind of get more into the immer immersion circulation in a second. So uh, if this is a flank steak. It actually uh, is part of the leg of the cow. And you can see it's a muscle that runs lengthways. It's almost like a teardrop shape. It's a little bit thicker towards the one end than the other. It's a little thinner on this end, the wider end. So what we did is we actually pre-seared the meat today, seasoned it up, a little salt and pepper, and then um, <clears throat> just grilled it off. So then the... Um, so the idea behind this is it holds this temperature and it cooks it very gently. So we're, and, but we could take this piece of meat in the state that it's in now, put it in the water bath. And in the it, bag. In the bag, and it will, it will cook in the bag. And then we could take that out later and get a really nice quick sear on it and serve it. And it kind of takes out the, uh, the need to rest your meat. Like if you've ever seen like a, a steakhouse and stuff yeah. or been to a steakhouse, they will often grill their meat and then take it and set it aside for like 10, 15 minutes and let the juices relax. Because when you're cooking a piece of steak, is you, you're applying the heat and the muscle tenses up. And then when you rest the steak, the juices of that steak will then re kind of retract and go back into the steak instead of kind of uh, deserting to the middle. So if you've ever had a steak fresh off the grill and you've cut into it and then there's juices it and blood everywhere, everywhere. Right. 
it kind of defeats the purpose of, you know, actually well, even cooking like that steak. Turkey. You have to let it rest a little right. bit, right? So, a cool Do you little recommend a cast iron? I'm sorry to interrupt, but do you recommend a cast iron to, pan to, to, to sear, sear in? in? Yeah. I would definitely use a cast iron pan. They're phenomenal. They hold heat. They they actually, the more you use them, the more flavor that the pan actually right. kind of gains. Season, so yeah. that would be ideal to use. And how but, long do you sear it for? Um, if you were to sous vide it, uh, probably just like a minute each side. Right. Well, nice, just to nice give it hot, that. nice yeah. super hot pan. But a cool little trick, in case you don't have a vacuum sealer, and I don't have a vacuum sealer at the. Who colony, has a vacuum colony. sealer? So. Um, oh, <laughs> so if you if you don't have one, this is a cool little trick. Now, uh, we actually like to use ice water. Uh, we don't. We didn't throw any ice in this, but. So if you have a regular Ziploc bag and you throw this in there, the pressure of the water will actually force the air out of the bag. Oh. So then you get that down as far as you can and then just simply kind of seal it up. And then you more or less have a vacuum sealed piece of meat. Wow. So then if you were going to sous vide, then you just kind of Rest that in there, and there's just a, a tiny motor. It circulates the water, keeps the temperature up, and we had it covered. So then it would just sit in there. Generally, you're going to give it about an hour or so. I'm covering so. up a plug. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you would give it about an hour to uh, kind of hang out in the water and just gently kind of cook. And then if you didn't pre-sear it, uh, you could easily just sear it in a pan. Uh, and But what we did is we pre-seared it. And so to talk about the dish and how balanced it is, like we were thinking, okay, well, we want to do a steak. Uh, do we want to do steak frites, palm frites with the steak? Uh, you know, and French fries, maybe we wouldn't hold up, wouldn't hold up so well. So we decided we elected to do a dish called palm, uh, palms Anna. So uh, palm is for French for potato. So it's, uh, so what we did is we uh, really thinly sliced uh, some potatoes, and then we take our cast iron pan, uh, just heat it up gently, and put a lot of butter. The dish is basically rides it's so on butter. It's so fat-free. <laughs> it's like it's so fat-free. So uh, you get a lot of butter in your pan, and layer your potatoes in, kind of shingling them on top of each other, uh, each other, and then uh, you can take that, uh, get a nice crisp layer on the bottom and then slide that in the oven and just wait for it to, uh, you know, like, till it's tender all the way through. So you'll be getting a nice little wedge of potato, kind of crispy, but still kind of soft. You'll get a nice, nicely done, very pink throughout steak. And then uh, we decided to pair that with uh, a red wine reduction. So it's very simple, just uh, we took a little Cabernet Sauvignon, Threw it in a pot, reduced it down, added a tiny bit of sugar. The sugar helps uh, create body to the um, uh, to the reduction, so it has like almost like a nice uh, syrupy uh, aspect to it. And as you can see, which which is coming out, the steak is done beautifully. It's pink all the way out to the edges. Uh, so you should have a nice crisp piece potato, still kind of soft. Nicely done beef, and then the reduction of the red wine, which should help cut through some of the. Can we have one of those finished steak. plates up here, so we can get it on camera? Do you have one? Thank you so much. Look at this. Do you want to hold that up to the camera? Sure. I know that this is just starting to come around the room, and I hope I didn't take someone's plate away. And. Uh, and then another thing about... Did you hold uh, it up to the lens? <clears throat> oh, I'm sorry. Sorry. <laughs> and then another thing about uh, the, flank, uh, the flank steak is uh, because the grain of the steak kind of goes lengthways, you always want to cut oh, across so the cool. grain. It ac actually helps it become more tender. So like if you remember, remember when I uh, held it up before, the grain of the steak is actually running this way. So you want to cut across like this. So it actually, uh, you're not trying to, when you're chewing on the beef, 
you don't, you're not trying to break down that connective tissue that's there. So it actually will help break it down as we, you know, for us to slice it. So. No, Chef, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but flank seems to be, just from some of the research that I do and some of the shows mm -hmm. that I've watched, flank seems to be kind of popular. It, it is, it is becoming a little bit more popular. Uh, it's fairly inexpensive for beef. Uh, it's, uh, you know, it's a, um, it's a cut that, uh, doesn't get widely used, so there isn't as high a demand for it as, say, like a fillet or a sirloin. Right. But and that and that's where, you know, you, the the, I, I don't want to say off cuts, but the less popular cuts is actually where you can make your, you know, make some interesting dishes and you know make better money on it for right. a restaurant theme. So. Yeah, I, I mean, I've seen a lot of new um, recipes which were interesting, and I just thought, oh wow, flank. I've, I don't work with that very and much. It, I mean, it's excellent, you know, marinated, uh, you know, summertime Grills. on on the grill, you know. Yeah. But like I said, if you if you grill it, just allow it to rest before you slice it, or you can cut it into steaks and you know. And do you watch that Grill, grill University? Like grill University. Ever, yeah. I've never it's seen. A thing. It. It's a show. I swear. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard of it. It's really fun. It's cool, and I don't remember the chef's name, but. Um, yeah, he does some amazing things, and I know that he's he's done some neat things with Flank. Okay. I am going to step off real quick and grab our raffle, but you yeah. keep talking. The, uh, the Flank me. itself, I know you guys all talk about it, but um, how is it? Delicious. Is it good? Is it tender? Is it really great? That's what I'm talking about. All right. Um, now, that's something that, uh, you know, we chose the piece of, the piece of meat because it's... Uh, we use it actually in the restaurant at, at Posh, and we sous vide it at Posh as well. So if, if you really liked it, it's something that you're like, oh, I wish I had more of that, come down and you get that. Uh, you know, Sean ran through the whole thing with sous vide, uh, but we, this is actually, it's mine, it's not his. I only uh, borrow it. That steak's mine too, by the way. <laughs> that's, that's yours, that's yours, but that's mine. You can't have it. Um, so yeah, we, we use it at the restaurant, and it's, you know, it's super, it's really interesting, it's really great. Uh, you know, when uh, we were trying this, these different steaks out at the facility to, fit, you know, like we were trying to figure out what do we want to put on the menu, they gave us the flank steak that we have at Posh, and I could, I could cut the steak with a plastic fork. That's how tender it was. And then we were sold. So and, did I don't uh, need a knife? Well, they didn't give me a knife, and I complained. I said, but you know what? <laughs> this thing is so tender, I, I cut it with a fork. This is unbelievable. So we went with that. So it's a really great piece of meat. Uh, it's really... Uh, uh, everyone seems to enjoy it. So if you really like it, come on down and get it. So if you don't mind, I'm going to ask for your help yeah. in pulling names. I'm going to pull our raffle winners. Um, the first one is for the upcoming menu February in February. I like to rummage. <laughs> Angelo's will be the presenter that night. Alan, can you read that? C-O-A. Is there an Alan in the house? Adam? Is that Adam? <laughs> Who wrote this, me? Is <laughs> it's very poor. <laughs> <laughs> We've got her winner. I'll bring it over to you. And then the next one is for a great music event that's going to be happening on um, February 16th. That's our Winter Blues Guitar Mageddon. Do we have any blues fans in the house? Very cool. So I, we work with all regional local musicians. We've got a stellar lineup uh, that's ready to play, including who's ever heard of Sacabo? The, um, they do a lot of Santana, and they're really good musicians. Um, so we're really excited about that event. It's held here, facing the ballroom, just like we are here. So I'm going to pull the name for that one. Or Chef is going to pull the name for that one. Ann Kessler. Ann Kessler. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> so cool. All right. I'll make sure that you get your tickets before you leave. Okay. Thank you. All right. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank God I didn't have to pick it because I can't read that well either. <laughs> there's a lot of things I can't do. You always said it either. I was like, I was oh my gosh, there's just so edging my way over it. I don't want to do it. <laughs> but I'm glad that you guys couldn't read it either. So I think I Deb Peterson normal. wanted to talk a little bit about some upcoming events as well. Sure, absolutely, um, and this is a wonderful opportunity. For those folks who have kids and also our grandchildren, we have um, coming up on January 20th, just two weeks away, our Nugget and Fang. This is part of our children's series, which is sponsored by Garrity's. And um, this is um, 
run by Arts Power, a touring company, so it's a professional production. And the tickets are only $5. We've kept the tickets very low price this year because we were able to receive some other grant and funding. Next month. And um, following that in February is Let Freedom Ring, a music and poetry of black history in honor of Black History Month. Also, Jordan, you mentioned the evening of Fine Food and Wine, which yes. Maria said is coming up on um, April 29th, which is one of our biggest fundraisers. We have two major fundraisers a year, or actually three fundraisers, but the, um, this is one of our major fundraisers that's really been standing the test of time, and I have some members of my fund development committee here today, members of the board and members of the fund development committee who work very, very hard on that. And it's just so much fun. So it's so nice that you said things about it. But oh, absolutely. Oh, you know wow. what I like? What I like about it is that one, you get to see all the rooms, and that's really cool. Mm -hmm. But there's a before and well, kind of an after party, if you will, which I enjoy the most, mm -hmm. uh, which is in this room, right? Correct me if right. I'm wrong. Right. And this is this is what this is the appetizers and drinks. We start here with appetizers yeah. and drinks, and we divide into five different groups. And then we go to each floor, and then we yeah. interchange, and so we get a, a chance to experience the main entrees. And yeah. Posh is always a main entree for us up in the Casey Library. Uh, and I, my favorite room. Your favorite room. I love it. Who do I get? I always get um, Josh Hodel. Jo Josh, oh, yeah. he yes. loves that room. He's oh, we have media reps. It. We right. have media yeah. reps from all the different media um, partners that we have, uh, that we're fortunate to have here at the Cultural Center. And yeah, it's it, great. And I it's really a lot of fun, because we start here with appetizers, and then we go to the main, the fun, one of the five rooms and then we interchange yeah. we get to experience all the five floors of the cultural center and then we end up here for dessert yeah i call it i call it the big event you know these these little nice events that we do it's a little close you know right. and intimate, but this is this is the event you get your your tux on your your dress on and it's a night out and it's it's great what's really nice too about this event is that there's so many individuals that have either you know they've been to the ballroom maybe for a wedding or have been to a show and are very familiar with you know the main floor rooms but aren't really too familiar with the other rooms throughout the building so it gives everyone an opportunity to not only engage with um, the fabulous restaurants and chefs that are in the room but the actual room itself it becomes now, part of the event. Now, how come that we don't do anything in the basement? Can we talk about that? Uh, well, <laughs> we do. We don't do anything in the basement. We, we do. We do and lots. What do you do in the basement? Maria, why don't you take it over with the underground mic? <laughs> <laughs> we do. Every Tuesday we do. Um, there's a room in our lower level. It's called the hood room. So the next time that you're down that way, um, chances are you're using the facilities or maybe attending a children's um, performance, um, like they do the little showcases down there with their little dragons. Um, but right in the lower level at the bottom of the steps, you'll notice right in front, um, r forward from the steps, is a room with pocket doors, and it's called the Raymond Hood Room. And that room is named after the architect that did design this building, Raymond Hood. Um, and I think, as you all know, our, this project was started in 1928 and was completed in 1930. But anyway, Raymond Hood was famous for some other buildings that he, uh, he was on the design team for as well, including Radio City M Music Hall and Rockefeller Center. So there's a lot of history here. So please, by all means, too, um, come and do a tour. But anyway, underground microphone, we've been working with, her name is Lily Mayopolsky, if you haven't heard of her, she's, she's a doll. And uh, she's a young artist in the, in the scene, and, and all these young artists come up. Um, she puts together a lineup every single week. It's called Un Underground Microphone. It's every Tuesday. Entertainment starts at 6. Brian, our handy-dandy bartender, whips up some phenomenal drinks. You, I, I can't even tell you the talent that has been coming every single week. So please hop on our website um, the, or our Facebook pages. These, um, the acts are usually uh, um, listed on there so you can see the lineup. But if you just want to come in and hang out for an hour after work, unwind, see some great talent of all different shapes, sizes, and genres, definitely come. We do, and we also host comedians and um, poets and everything. So it's a real little hipster community, and it's, it's a <laughs> lot of fun. So it's been bringing a lot of new people in the door. It uh, was just, oh, sorry. Huh. We were voted a, um, best new event. Electric City in Electric City, so right. underground microphone. And I know that Posh was voted best ambiance. All right, yeah. All right. What does Colony get? <laughs> Colony is right there. <laughs> needs, yeah, they needs none of that. They needs none of that, because we all know. They have the biggest tent in town. <gasps> that tent is huge. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hits. Have, what was that? You said hits, right? Tents. 
tent. Oh. They have an outdoor <laughs> tent. I guess that's only where you can put tent. a tent is outdoors. But yeah. they have a big tent outdoors, and they have, and that's where they put uh, you know, a lot of their summer parties and everything. It's really cool. And we don't have one at Posh, so I'm a little bit jealous. But you know what? Let I'll, me I'll tell you how me. inspirational you guys all are. Um, right before Christmas, I think everybody feels this. You might have a day where you're like, you know what? I'm just so not into this this year. And then you get over it and you move on and you outdo yourself from last year. But yeah. every time I drive out by the building, I look at the beautiful decorations and I'm like, oh, that's so nice. Oh, they so go, it's inspiring. Uh, and yeah. I, I go home and I try to do the same thing. But it Josh never and Paul go, you know, they take it to the next level. They you know, do. The, the, I think it was the day after Thanksgiving, they were bringing down, what is it, a 30 foot tree or something? Some ridiculous thing. But it's huge and it's beautiful and I love it. And they put it right in the dining room and it's, you know, it's obviously just. To the nines, perfect. That's amazing. Yeah. And their staff is phenomenal. I do have to say. Oh, right. and Colin, I, Yeah. Their staff is stellar. Um, you want to go over and be casual, and, and they let you do that. You want to dress yeah. it up, you can do that. So that's all. How good is this flag steak? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Wait, I have it's like butter. It's like butter. It's amazing. It's a sous vide. You know, it just yeah. it doesn't yeah. tense it up, as no. I say. I don't know. If it, you guys you know, you can definitely taste the difference. Yeah. It's, it cooks in a nice little bath. You know? Yeah. So. So I have a question. I have a question. <laughs> if if someone didn't, I, I love rare raw, you know, mm -hmm. medium rare meat. If someone wanted that more well done, would you cook it more in that bath, or you could mm. you could set your temperature to a higher temperature? And it would actually cook it to your likeness in the bath, and then all you would, in, and then you could, you know, sear it afterwards, and it would. Yeah, it, 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 it handles the temping of the meat. You don't have to even worry. I, I about was it. lucky because I got depths. <laughs> in the. Uh, <laughs> To give you an example of that, at, you know, at Posh, like I said, we have this, and that comes up a lot because everybody wants a different temperature, perhaps on the same table uh, or different tables themselves, but we keep it, you know, what did you have it, 130 or something like that? 130, here? 132. We keep it at oh, 125, wow. so we keep it rare. And we leave it like that so that everybody has the option to get whatever they want. So if a table were to come in mm -hmm. and one person wanted medium rare and one person wanted well done, we sear it afterwards. So it comes out unseared and then it goes on our grill. And then we cook it to the temp that, you know, the You bring it wants. up, right? Yeah. Because you can always go forward, you can't go backwards. That's right. right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, oh, wow. That's amazing. Are you, are you, you're using this commercially in a restaurant. Yeah. Like, how, how practical, how realistic is it at home? At home. Like, oh, I'm it's thinking, phenomenal. Well, I want that on my kitchen counter. It's phenomenal f for at home for a couple different reasons. Uh, one, if you're cooking f just for your family or yourself, you can put your stuff in there and it'll sit there all day. So you don't have to, you know, worry about rushing around trying to do everything at the same time. You know, you can relax and you yeah, can... You, you could throw this steak in a, a couple, like, a, as little as an hour, but you could let that go all day and it won't overcook it, undercook it, it yeah. it'll be that temperature. And I mean, in this unit, you could easily, like it, I'm sure it comes in a box, you could just bring it out when you need it, have your vessel, a pot, you know, and it just it simply attaches, and you could bring it out and whenever you know, whenever yeah. you wanted. And the great thing about this, I and I've used the used this before uh, to actually slow or, or soft poach eggs in the shell. So like, take whole eggs, throw them in the water bath, and it just oh, and, yeah. and it like and I'm, it comes with a guide, it gives you temperatures, and you can actually soft poach an egg in shell, crack the shell, put it on your toast in the morning, and it's beautiful. You showed them the crowd acting, right? Yes. When I was gone, I was cutting the meat for you. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, like, the practical thing is, uh, like I like to think, you know, because I like to be the best at everything. And if I have guests over my house, I want them to have the best food possible. And I get worried cooking steaks like everybody else. You know, I don't want to overcook it. God, please don't let me overcook this. Right? Reputation's on the line at this stressful. point. Uh, but th this thing's great because you can go to shifts or one of the, you know, the stores you get your stuff at and get, you know, nice meat. And you are guaranteed you won't mess it up. And that's what's nice because you can, you know, sip a little bit of uh, do you go to your drink while you're doing and do it. Training sessions. I could. <laughs> We're open to anything. <laughs> that's too funny. But yeah, it's definitely practical, and you can do anything with it, from fish to, to meat to short rib, whatever you want. It's cool. It definitely. And this guy here, he hooks up to the phone, and we chat, we talk about things. Uh, you can be 
in your garage, you could be upstairs, wherever, and you can check in on it where the temperature is, and you could set timers. So is it like an app? It'll, yeah, it's yeah, an app. Like blue, it, yeah. It'll connect via oh. Bluetooth to your phone, so, so you can, say, like you can Houston, monitor. Houston, we have a problem, or yes. Yes. hey, we're doing all good. That's yeah, funny. Posh is huge, so we have three floors, and we're always somewhere different, and uh, I check in on him, yeah. you know. He's going at three o'clock, and I need him good by five, and we check in with each other <laughs> throughout the day. Technology is great. We have a relationship. <laughs> wow. Well, we may as well move on to dessert. Well, thank God it only takes 30 <laughs> seconds because we could have just spent all night on the steak, right? Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> it doesn't really take 30 seconds. So the, so the idea behind the dessert is to take a uh, flavor profile and to uh, or a couple flavor profiles and do something interesting with it and using a kind of inter an interesting technique. So uh, right off the bat, like we, uh, the idea came about uh, an old pastry chef that I worked with made a tiramisu uh, that was a lemon blueberry tiramisu. And she made lady fingers and soaked the lady fingers and made a lemon mascarpone. So she had all the components that are in a tiramisu and made a standard tiramisu. And it was delicious and it was great, but I start to think about things as like we think, oh, what's a well-balanced dish? Well, how can I present this and make it interesting looking so it's not just a square piece of tiramisu? So the idea is to take two flavor profiles that work with each other, lemon and blueberry, which is very traditional, and to make, make it into a tiramisu, but a little bit more interesting. So we have a couple different, uh, so we made a lemon mascarpone, that's part of the dish. Uh, we made a blueberry compote, and then uh, to enhance the lemon flavor, we also made a lemon curd. Lemon curd's very simple. It's lemon juice, lemon zest, eggs, sugar. Uh, you start to cook that down and add butter, and then lit it gently come up to heat and once it does it thickens up the egg yolks be, start to become thick so then you chill that down and that's a component of the plate but then we'll get to the 30 second sponge cake uh, this is very very simple make a standard sponge cake recipe um, and then what you need uh, and well you don't necessarily need it but these definitely help this is a uh, co2 uh, whipped cream whipper. Uh, you like brought the biology lab to the I know, work. Yeah. I, <laughs> he told, Sean, he, no, this is all his idea, the by the way. I don't want to give him the credit, but I'm going to give yeah, him the credit funny. anyways. Uh, <laughs> he made this up, but he asked, he told me about it, and he's like, I'm going to make a 30 second sponge cake. And I said, hmm, what? You're going to do what? He's like, I'm going to make a 30 second sponge cake. Said, There's no way you're making a cake in 30 seconds. And, uh, and he showed me, and I was jaw dropped down. He's yeah. going to show it. This is literally, it's like magic. So how we came um, up with that, I don't know. So like, like I said, it's it's a standard sponge cake recipe. You put it in this whipper. This is a, a CO2 charger, and it just helps aerate the Who batter. Who has one of these? So, <laughs> <laughs> but what I did find though is if you make the the uh, your cake batter uh, like a day in advance and actually just slide it in the cooler air bubbles will start to form. There'll be kind of a chemical reaction and then you can kind of work with that and use maybe like an ice cream scooper to fill your cups. And this is just a standard uh, nine ounce paper cup. You can find it anywhere. Uh, so I'm just gonna press this. You made it with a Solo cup before, right? Mm, Red Solo cup. Oh, like one of those like little... Yeah, like, a, like those little... Know, the Toby Keith song, right? <laughs> Red Solo cup. <laughs> I've made it in a plastic so you uh, can make solo it, cup before. You can make larger ones uh, yeah. if, uh, if you wanted to instead of just small ones, right? Yes. The, that's why it's not working. I don't have a piece in here. All right. Well, we're going to say that we did this. Uh, I forgot to attach it correctly. So, uh -oh. <laughs> so um, yeah, I messed up. But anyway, so you would extract the batter out of here into this or simply just scoop it into the cup. So my, so then you would oh, put it in the microwave. Way. I don't even need to use the microwave now. Uh, <laughs> we so, brought that guy for and li <laughs> <laughs> Literally 30 seconds. I forgot the down. What are we point. missing? So uh, you, well actually, what are we get us out of here. Then I can actually show it. There you go. I just want to see it. I made him do it three times today. <laughs> do it again. I made it three so you, times. I don't Wait, believe you. Do it, do it again. Microwave. All right. So 
This should be interesting. <laughs> That's too uh, funny. All right, so yeah, I, uh, so you have the batter here. We're gonna fill this cup up about halfway. Let's see here. All right. We're gonna invite a chef to Franklin Institute coming in May, <laughs> and he's gonna do this for all of the little kids when they're talking about the little science ideas, right? Yeah. <laughs> and I've just recently, within the past couple of years, got, in, got into the molecular scientific side of things. Uh, just very briefly, not, not like head over heels about it, but it's just an interesting way to do things, a, a different way of looking at recipes and, and such. So literally 30 seconds. And so the batter goes in there, and that does what to the batter? Real this quick? helps aerate it. Aerate it, okay. Because uh, like you can make whipped cream in this. Like just take okay. regular heavy whipping cream, maybe a little bit of sugar, a little bit of vanilla. Anything? Just shake it up, and then the CO2 will add the gas, and it'll make whipped cream instantly okay. right out of there. And then, and then from there you put it in your vessel, and then yeah. you put it in the microwave for about 30, 30, 30 seconds. seconds here. That would be I think I saw someone do, which would be actually an interesting thing. Maybe we'll try it. He's Irish. He'll like it. Um, <laughs> May we have one over here? Green food dye for St. Patrick's Day. And so that's a pretty good thing. I'll just hold this in front of the Thank camera. You. So as you can kind of see, you do this is puffed right up. All right. And it's got a lot of air, air bubbles in it. So then simply just, you could take a paring knife. This is just like a pastry knife. He was having a hard time getting it out oh, of there that's before. Cute. I said, just that cut it, rip it open. Loosen please. it up. Pastry knife. Okay, thing. so this comes out, it's nice and piping hot. But this is the cool the cool part, as you can kind of see as it's being plated or coming out to you, is that then you oh. can take this and you can break it apart. And you can kind of see the air bubbles. So it's a little bit different texturally than an ordinary cake, but uh, so the idea is that you know we garnish the plate with all the flavorings, the mascarpone, the lemon curd, and then you get these interesting shapes. And then the other cool thing that I came across was freeze drying. Freeze drying is an excellent way of preserving uh, fruits, vegetables, whatever. Because uh, we do that every day. <laughs> um, and so the process is you uh, like. Uh, in a large process, you would take liquid nitrogen, freeze your berries, and then dehydrate them. And it's, there's this whole process that I don't really understand, but it's like if you freeze it at one temperature, you're using another temperature to evaporate all the moisture out of it. So these are blueberries <coughs> that are dehydrated. They actually taste like cereal. Now, we're like, we're, we're regular people that we don't do that. <laughs> we're regular people. We're regular people. Because tell everybody so, where you got Oh, my gosh. Where'd you get them? They're like the little berries in your cereal. Yeah. Where'd you get the blueberries from? Did you pick them? I got them off Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we so could do it. Oh, so then oh, another component to the dish, because you, you get tiramisu, and it's always powdered with a little bit of cocoa on top. And we're like, well, we want to make a reference to that. So we took the dried, the freeze-dried blueberries, a little bit of powdered sugar, blended it together, and then we can just take that, and move this over here, and we can sprinkle it over and create that dusting effect mm -hmm. on the cake, and it creates a cool presentation. So that's, really cool. that's just a kind of new and interesting way of taking a classic dish, taking a different flavor profile, and then flipping it on its head And it a doesn't bit. taste real heavy. No, it's very light. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's awesome. I, mean, I was blown away. Couldn't, I was like, magic. That's so delicious. I don't even what want to do know we think? Magic. Did you make that one? Yeah. Yeah, if you, if you didn't have this, like I said, you, you would maybe make your batter, let it sit in the fridge for a day. And then you could just take it, scoop it into these cups. And because I, I forgot to hook a certain nozzle up right and it didn't want to come out. So I just spooned it out of there and it, it you know, 30 seconds. If you do that, do you mix it some more or do you just let it? No, just like if you set it and forget it. Mix it, throw it in the fridge the okay. next day, bring it out, have your cups ready. Uh, and that's it. And I only just poked a couple little holes in the cups. It, it kind of helps some of the steam expel and uh, create the air bubbles. So we have like a minute left. I was gonna, tr I was tr gonna try to get a couple of questions if I may. Sure. I'm gonna come out into the audience. Let's that do is, it. What do we think? Very good. Awesome. All right. Do we have any questions? Yeah. 
questions? Oh, cool. Chefs, now with that flank steak, if you uh, hit it with a mallet, <laughs> like the old days, mm -hmm. will, it, will, it, will it still make it nice and tender? Yeah. Or is that not the choice of meat to use a mallet on? I could use it on anything. Yeah. I use yeah. it on my cooks. Yeah, you could, you, could <laughs> you could definitely tenderize it. We're all about the mallet. <laughs> I don't think my sound is on. Who else? Do we have a question? Awesome. So these uh, sponge cakes are one at a time. I actually did uh, four at a time earlier today. Okay. Uh, and I, but I accounted for there being more, so I did it for just a little bit over a minute for four, and they came out perfect. Did you notice the common theme? He cheats a little bit. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Questions over here? Oh, we have an unrelated question. My favorite. It falls into the chemistry category. When you said that you were making your tempura with the club soda, Yes. This past New Year's, I had some fresh kielbasa and called my mother just for some tips on how to cook it. And, you know, she said the last 10, 15 minutes, drain it off and throw in a can of ginger ale, which I did, and everybody loved it. Is, would that have a difference? Uh, I mean, you're, you're changing. Oh, you it, stumped him. You threw what in ginger ale? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get it. Wait, uh, you the, put the, you, the kielbasa. Well, it was like, fresh kielbasa. Use, it wasn't use, smoked, so you okay. got to okay. cook that right. totally through. So you, so you use the, the ginger ale as the batter. No, no, no. no just he cooked the kielbasa in the ginger ale. So like, oh, cool. the, the idea behind oh, it, maybe using sodas uh, is you, you're n not so much on a molecular level, but you, you're just get it, you're getting sugars where you okay. might not normally have them. So like, it, it's just a, it's a and. I mean, you have carbonation there, but if you're cooking it in that, you kind of lose the bubble aspect of it. Like, you could use a soda in a tempura. I mean, that's basically yeah. what club soda is. But uh, I think they use, like, root beer a lot, right? Yeah, like, uh, root beer is used a lot, like, in glazes and things, because you have those sugars, and they'll condense down once you cook something like that. Yeah. Tell us the thing. Oh, he said thank you. You could have said thank you. <laughs> thank you. You're welcome. We have another question over here real quick. I'm sorry. We kind of... Cut this short a little bit. I consider myself to be an above average home chef. So if I wanted to start exp experimenting with molecular gastronomy, are there kits available? Are there, yes, where do I go uh, to find something like there, that? That's a great question. There are kits available online. Uh, molecule, molecule R. And so it's mo Molecule and the letter R is a brand that I've actually dabbled with. Uh, which uh, it kind of teaches you uh, foams, uh, spherifications, uh, which is like another way to present um, like a flavorful liquid. Um, and uh, another thing that I've done is uh, uh, caviars, or like flavored caviar. So you take like a flavored juice and you can chill olive oil down you add a chemical to uh, your flavorful liquid and then you can like kind of take a dropper and drop your liquid into that oil and there's a reaction and it capsulates that liquid and then it kind of almost becomes like a caviar so like you can for me you can garnish a plate with a flavorful liquid but and have it be in a sphere of you know, a spherified form. So, uh, if that's a word, uh, and uh, so it's just it, spherified. It's just a way. It's it's a way for us to take like something that's flavorful that we would already put on the dish and you know uh, present it in a different way. Thank yes. you, Chef. We have another question over here. Regarding the steak, say I want to do that at home and I want medium rare. Um, will it never get overcooked if I set it at a certain temperature? And the second part of the question is, is it safe to have it at, at that kind of a temperature for a longer period? If, say, you said you were upstairs and you forgot about it, that's safe for the... It, um, that's a really good question. There, there's, there's time temperature things going on. You, you don't want things uh, to be, like, actually, like, where that was set is kind of like in the prime home for, like, bacteria to grow but if you do if you're time sensitive to uh i would say what like two hours yeah i think like what is it they say it two, for, for the meat itself is an hour and a half at that point and i've had it in the kitchen just so you know you get a an idea in the kitchen with the, the flank steak or we have medallions in there as well for from five o'clock to nine o'clock 
and they're perfect the whole way through. So you can have it there for four hours, four or five hours, and we don't have a problem with it. It doesn't uh, overcook, and the machine itself doesn't overheat. So you're good all the way around. So it's a, it's a long period of time that you have a forgiveness, if you will. Very good questions. Awesome presentation. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give Chef Sean and Chef Jordan a big round of applause. Uh, real quick, I wanted to say thank you to our volunteers. So, um, the people that were serving you this evening uh, were our volunteers, uh, our red coats as we call them, but they were black on black for this event. We have a great group of volunteers at the Scranton Cultural Center. Very special thank you to Josh and Paul from the Colonnade and Posh. Um, and again, thank you to all of our sponsors. Please always hop onto our website and see the upcoming events. Um, there's plenty of them. If you don't know what's going on, that's always a great place to, to see what's going to be happening at the Cultural Center. Have a great new year, um, and thanks so much for being here. Thank you guys. We'll see you in February, absolutely. To we'll see Angelo's. But practically everything leaves me totally cold. The only exception I know is the case when I'm out on a quiet spree, fighting vainly the old ennui, and I suddenly turn and see. Thank you.